Hey guys, welcome back. Well, today we're going to do a video on Substance Painter and I'm going to explain to you guys how the particle system works. Okay, so let's check it out. Here we go. All right, guys, let's get started. So we're in Substance Painter. I loaded up this object and it's basically just a, a cube that I turned into a wall. I made sure it was UV'd properly and I just put on a texture just for the heck of it. So we have something to look at, all right? So that said, I'm going to snap it to my front view by holding down Alt and Shift and moving my left mouse button, and there we go. And now we are ready to fool around with particles, okay? Right, so first of all, where are the uh, where are the particles? Well, in this menu over here, you have the particle menu right here. And in this system, you have all sorts of options from broken glass to burn marks to leaking paint uh, and so forth, all right? And depending on the type of particle that you select, you will have more or less options to play with and different options to play with. But let's look at the basics first, okay? What we need uh, in order for us to do this is to have a layer. I created a, an empty layer up here. I mean, if you don't, if you don't have that, and I wanna go in, you can see I can't do anything. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna create a new layer right here. Now, once we do that, and in this case, I selected leaking paint, I get a couple of things. I get a brush and I get a material. Now let's look at our brush first. If we scroll way up, here are our brush settings. We have uh, basically the normal setup for a brush. You have the size, the flow, the jitter, and so forth. So you can increase or decrease the brush size. Let's see, that's about it. And other than that, you know, pretty basic. For a material, we have color, we have height, we have roughness, and so forth. Now, you need to be careful when you do this because as you, for example, paint on paint, you would expect some thickness, but definitely not too much, okay? So be careful with that. So for now, I'm just gonna turn off height, roughness, and metalness, and we're just gonna go with color, okay? Now, we got a green color going on right now, which is uh, fine by me. So uh, let's go in and before I test this, let's make sure we have nothing weird going on in our settings right here. Okay, let's give this a go. So I'm just gonna left click and drag. And let's see what happens. And there you go. You have dripping paint, woohoo, okay? So let's say hit Control Z and go back. Now. This is not so interesting. This is not interesting either. However, here we got a bunch of things to play with, the physics, all right? So let's see. What if we decide to uh, tweak the direction? So we got wind direction, X, Y, and Z. Let's, for example, take this wind and in the Z value and push it all the way to the right. And we'll just paint again and see what happens. You can see that the paint is clearly leaning towards the left, okay? Now that can be really useful when you are putting paint on a tilted object and you need um, to have that go in a certain direction, okay? And the same deal, uh, you know, uh, is the case with the other values as well. So what about this gravity factor? Well, I'll show you that. I'm gonna push this way down and we'll do a little test. And there you go. And then we'll push that gravity factor way up and we'll do it again. And what you see is the higher the gravity, the further down the paint will go. Okay, so that's uh, pretty cool and good to know. So what else? Uh, let's see, we have the uh, randomizer and the particle life. These I think are pretty important. So again, I'll do a test right there. And now I'm gonna go to the particle life and I'm gonna push that all the way up. And let's do the same thing once again. What you see is that the particles, they are living much, much longer, and as a result, it'll go all the way down the board, okay? So let's get rid of that. We don't wanna go all the way up on that value, let's go halfway. And then we have the particle life randomizer. Now that is cool for the simple reason that a streak of paint like this isn't really how it looks typically. If you have that randomizer way, way up and you do that again, you will have long streaks, shorter streaks, openings and so forth. And it just looks cooler, okay? We'll just hit Control Z to go back. 
let's see what else. Now, like I said, uh, depending on the particle that you uh, pick, you will have different options to play with. So let's do one more, okay? Let's see, we have a vein, let's say a blood vein on skin or whatnot, okay? We'll go in, we'll change the color to black, and basically for the most part, I'm gonna leave everything alone, maybe with the exception of the brush size, all right? So let's go in and just click once. Let's see what happens, not too much. It's really, really small, so we're gonna have to make it a bit bigger, okay? So let's do something like so, and I'll zoom in a bit. Here you can see what went on. So I'm just gonna left click and slightly drag. Come on, yeah, there you go. Kinda looks a bit weird. It's a bit too thick in my opinion, so we'll try that once more. There you go, yes, very nice. So that's what you can do. We'll do something else. Uh, let's see, we'll do uh, broken glass. Let's try that. See how cool that is? And here you can have, for example, a tear, let's say a flesh wound or whatnot, or I don't know, just use your imagination, okay? So basically that's all there's to it. So you have your empty layer that you need, you select your particle, you have your brush, your material, and your dynamic settings, and that's all there's to it, okay? So uh, have fun with this. If you have any questions, as always, please let me know. And that said, thank you guys for watching. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe, and see you guys next time, bye. Well, thanks for watching, and before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.